This video is made for adult collectors because Optimus Prime murders people left, right, and center in these movies. It's, it's kind of terrifying. For today, in the name of freedom, we take the battle to them. Affordability is one of the huge draws to the deluxe class size and price point. It's a class full of great toys and it's usually the cheapest to get into that isn't legend scale. Prices of everything, not, not just Transformers, have gone up a lot in the last couple years and these things are becoming less and less affordable to a lot of people. So deluxe class is becoming more and more important. So why don't we get characters like Primer Megatron in this price range? I don't know. A lot of what mainline Transformers is today is scale. They make things to quote unquote scale with one another, which makes Deluxe Primes and Megatrons not sell to that demographic or fit in their current market scheme. But I feel like making the most important characters, the expensive ones, makes it hard for people who might not be able to just go out and buy a Voyager or a Leader to get Primer Megatron or whatever. Or if you're trying to start out in collecting, it's if you want to just go to Walmart and buy an Optimus Prime, you look at that $70 price and you go, that's quite a lot actually so making them a deluxe size just would be great and yet they don't do that but what's funny is if you look hard enough you can find a deluxe optimus prime for cheap as shit because this was 20 bucks i got this entire thing for $20 and that's so neat i have two major problems with this that drag the figure down both figuratively and literally but it's still pretty good for 20. dark of the moon was a very interesting toy line that like revenge of the fallen tried a lot of new things like mech tech self-filling weapon ports, new ways to engineer toys, and this, a deluxe class movie Optimus Prime, which I don't think we saw since the protoform one. This thing is very nice. It's a bite-sized Prime that isn't Legends and ends up being a super fun figure if it weren't for the lack of heels. Why? Why give such a large backpack and no heels? I'm shaking my fists while recording this, but you can't see that. It's consistently falling over and I really hampers the play experience because you can get him into some cool badass poses, put him down, and he dies. There are still plenty of poses you can get him into where he will stand, but it is a very frustrating endeavor. And I'm surprised there's no upgrade kits to fix that, nor did Haztac try to fix it with any of the redecos and retools they made of this guy. They just never did. Even in Age of Extinction, they left the no heels there. But it's like my only issue, because the rest of the toy is a lot of fun. It looks awesome. There's a lot of tooling on display here, and it's super accurate for a deluxe sized toy. I love the way they did the shoulder pads and how the torso is done without fake parts, which is nice to see at a toy at this size, because Studio Series couldn't even do that. There are some inaccuracies, the lack of hip wheels on the front end of the truck just hanging off the back, but it's not terrible. We've had primes with backpacks like that before, and the hip wheels on the Deluxe wouldn't have really worked with this conversion scheme. This version of the Deluxe, though, uses the darker grey, thank god. I don't know whose idea it was to use the lighter gray on most of the movie primes because that stuff sucks. It looks terrible in comparison to the dark gunmetal color, but this version doesn't come with a weapon, which is a huge shame, but he does come with a much bigger accessory, a rectangle, which we'll talk about in truck mode. He is good to fall over a lot when I do this. Oh, that is, that has gotten incredibly loose. I fixed this this morning. What the hell? Okay, anyways, he's a deluxe from Dark of the Moon 2011. So, Posing, while posing, there was a standard for it at the time. It wasn't as, like, dynamic as the stuff we get nowadays. And that's to be said with a lot of these old movie toys that I keep looking at this week. But, heck, the trailer is rattling and it's making a funny noise. So you're going on the floor. Head can swivel a little bit. It also, like, you know, doesn't have a proper locking point. So you can have him sort of standing there like this, which looks funny. Rotate the head a little bit. Shoulder pads can move in and out to accommodate the ball joints at the arms. There goes the dog. Oh, Ruby barks at everything. Ball joint at the shoulders. They can go in and out. You can't even see that. There you go. They can go in and out. You got bicep rotation, double jointed elbows, which is nice. Nothing at the wrist. You can pop this off to allow for a waist rotation. However, that, that looks a bit dumpy. And then, you know, there's the, the, the yeah. We'll talk about that. You got hips that can go forward and back and in and out on really loose ball joints because it was used. You got thigh rotation. You have a single jointed knee that bends a little over 90. And then ankle pivot. Ankle pivot on a 2011 toy. It's always nice to see. And he would work really well if he had heels. So let's put him in like a 
very sort of neutral Optimus Prime fists up pose. Let's get his self like. Ah, uh, there he goes. There he goes. He fell over. So the reason there's no heels is because of the way that this works. This unfolds and then this becomes the bottom of the truck. So, you know, you don't want anything sticking out of that, otherwise the wheels won't clear the ground. But it would have been really nice. I swear to God. It would have been really nice if there was like a fold out thing from back here or something that was in here that you could like slide out before you close this to give him a heel. But no, or if the hinge was just a little bit sticking out, like just a fair amount to allow for the ground clearance yet to still give him a heel. But they didn't do anything and he falls over. He died. Transformation shares some similarities with the Cyberverse Commander of the same year, and it's a lot more fun to do here than the Cyberverse Commander one. It's not your traditional prime transformation in the arms. They don't become the front of the truck and instead become the back of the cab, which is really neat, but the legs do end up in a similar spot to most other prime toys. The way the back wheels unfold though is really satisfying, and going back to robot mode, there's a little head reveal gimmick that unlike the Age of Extinction one, doesn't launch the head off, so zero out of 10. Truck mode though looks the part. The gradient on the front is subtle but very nice and the silver is so lush on here and they got everything that needed to be silver silver except for the back of the arms which is left blue and i wish it wasn't the proportions of the truck seem a little bit off with the sleeper cab looking a bit weird to me like it's too tall or something and the truck bed being a bit too long what's nice is there's no robot kibble nor are there feet hanging off the back bravo to this prime because a lot of primes seem to struggle with that even the masterpiece ones for some reason now the trailer it is a massive silver painted box and oh now i know why the arms weren't painted silver because that's a lot of silver paint on this thing it's long and a tad too big but hey it's a much nicer trailer than the earthrise looking one take that it's genuinely a nice trailer though the blue striping and the autobot badges are very clean and the silver is top friggin notch there's some minor scuffs on the top of mine due to this being in a baggie and a bin in a shop for like literal years but the rest of the trailer really held up quite well which goes to show you how durable the paint is that they use and it hitches to the truck and it also opens in a weird way not sure why they opted for this opening feature over the traditional one, but it's different, so I'm into it. You can store small deluxes or legend scale toys in here, and you can prop it up to expose more 5mm ports on the deck. So you can put guns all over this thing, along with 3mm clip bars. So you can plug so many weapons and weaponizers into this, so I know a few people who will quite like this trailer. It's genuinely a nice package of toy that only cost me 20 Canadian used which is a very good price for this. You get a lot for your 20, and if you can find this for that price, maybe even 30 used, I'd say go for it. Anything higher than that, then I would start looking for it with the box used, and then anything higher, higher, it's sealed. You can actually buy this and the G1 Optimus Prime 2-pack off of walmart.com still, so Walmart US. It's 170 bucks, which is a little bit much, but you get a G1 Optimus with trailer, and this Prime with trailer and gun. So. That's, that, you know, you can buy it there if you want to. Not sponsored. Also, Hasbro, please start making important characters in affordable size classes again that aren't just cores, please. That would be awesome. But that's been my look at Deluxe Class Dark Moon Optimus. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, and I'm very hungry.